Welcome back to Follow the Money. Iran announced its military would practice closing the Strait of Hormuz, one of the world's most vital oil shipping lanes. This just days after they showed off one of our drones that they claim they forced out of the sky. So is war with Iran becoming a possibility? Joining me now, Robert Spencer of Jihad Watch. Mr. Spencer, thank you so much. I want, I want to get to the drone in just a minute, but please talk to our viewers about how important the Strait of Hormuz is and then why in the world would anyone let them do military uh, procedures, practices in, in that very important shipping lane? Well, yes, Eric, as you say, it's, it's crucially important for the uh, oil shipping industry. And so it could uh, completely strangulate the American economy where it closed for any uh, indefinite period. And uh, closing it would essentially be an act of war. That would be why the Iranians would close it. Uh, we have to remember that Iran has considered itself to be in a state of war, uh, essentially in, in, in any effective way, uh, with the United States since 1979. And so uh, they want war war with Israel. There are these genocidal statements that Mahmoud Ahmadinejad and the uh, other the mullahs have made in uh, Iran about uh, destroying Israel and even bringing about the end of the United States. And so the closing of the Straits of Hormuz would all be in line with that overarching agenda. Okay. And, and again, they, they did try to, actually, they they closed it briefly, if I'm not mistaken, in, in what in the late 70s when they put some yes. uh, some mines in the water there. But then it was swept, and we got we got it clear. But so they're not they're not afraid of actually pulling this off, are they? Oh, no, certainly not. And why should they be afraid now with Barack Obama as president and everything they do? He just comes back with more obsequious attempts to at outreach and uh, more concessions. Now he's even against sanctions when a couple of years ago he was saying, no, we're going to have strong sanctions. And uh, the sanctions are the only thing that he's done. Uh, there are a couple of nuclear reactors that have exploded in Iran, and we can all be grateful for that, since the even the IAEA and Hillary Clinton have acknowledged that Iranians nuclear program is oriented toward making nuclear weapons okay, so, and so, yet the US has not played a role in that that seems to have been an Israeli operation and the once again we owe Israel as when they took out the Osirak reactor in the 80s once again we owe Israel a, uh, a, a great debt of gratitude so what's not to be afraid of when Mr. Obama makes statements like this when they shot when they took down our drone here's Obama's response to us losing a very very important piece of te technology take a listen we have asked for it back We'll see how the Iranians respond. Sir, you know what the problem is? I, I think I figured it out. Obama forgot to say pretty please. Yes. <laughs> but maybe if he, if he uh, puts together an aid package of a few billion, maybe they'll uh, loosen up. But meanwhile, the, uh, it appears that the Russians have given technology to Iran to be able to track and to shoot down these drones. Now they have the drone. If they do give it back, it will only be after they have copied all the technology in it and they know how it works so they can replicate it. And so uh, Obama, he asks for it back. I mean, even Jimmy Carter tried to mount a raid to get the hostages out. Sure. And, and we need to point out, you know, it's not just us, you know, throwing flame for throwing fire on an already burning fire. Mitt Romney today on the news channel said he would have gone in and gotten that drone back one way or another or destroyed it. So it's not out of the realm to say, hey, we could have done more than what we did other than just uh, let him have the drone and ask for it pretty please. Can we have it back, Mr. Ahmadinejad? Of course, without any doubt. I mean, see, this comes from Obama's refusal to recognize that Iran does act as if it's at war with the United States, and we need to deal with it accordingly. But uh, instead, he keeps pretending that if he makes nice enough, then the mullahs will be nice back. And yeah. yet, again and again and again, he's proven wrong. All right. All right. That's Robert Spencer from Jihad Watch. Thank you so much for joining us, sir. Always a pleasure, Eric. Thank yes, you. Sir.